afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about how to develop scalable Shiny application by using Kubernetes for a use case of employee attrition prediction. So before I start up my, my talk, and I would like to know how many of you in the room have heard about Kubernetes. All right, that's cool. So um, I think one thing that is very important is that Nowadays, we have uh, developed models and analysts by using R, but people are thinking of, well, how can we make this kind of thing into the real production, right? And uh, another very important thing is, is that when we put it into production, how we can make them a, a scalable so that we can serve more people so that people can you know, really benefit of, uh, from our application. So one of the very um, <clears throat> interesting use cases is about employee attrition prediction. So this is actually very common in, in the companies because the company really care about whether there will be some employees are not satisfied with the current situation of the company so that they, they may have some you know, uh, feelings about leaving the company or whatever so that maybe we can use some of the factors to predict whether some of the uh, uh, employees they will leave the company. Right. So. Uh, we know that there are many, many factors and there are many, many data we can collect from uh, our HR department and some of them maybe, for example, the age may be one of the factors and maybe something else. So these kind of things, I mean, from a data scientist point of view, we'll take them into consideration and do some correlation analysis and then build a model so that we can do the predict analysis to see whether any of the employees, they will have the intention to leave the company. So these are the, um, basically the techniques we do the, uh, 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 we use for building the model for prediction, right? So, I mean, first of all, no, uh, uh, normally we'll start with some feature engineering to like collect the data and extract the useful information from the raw data and then perform some feature selection. And then after that, we may select the model and then some proper, uh, appropriate algorithms to, uh, for example, in, in the current, uh, use case we're discussing about is more like the classification problem, right? Whether the guy will leave the company or not, so it's the binary. And usually we'll use algorithms like logic regression and support vector machine or some other fancy algorithms. So then after that, we do the evaluation to make sure the model works well in, 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 in So the next part is that after we have validated the model works well, right, we have to think about, okay, how we can operationalize the model and put them into production. So one of the, uh, you know, very nice parts of R is that it provides you the shiny framework so that you can develop the model and all of your analytical stuff into a shiny application. So the people can just go to the web browser and easily you know, benefit from the analytics you develop, right? So this is the nice thing. And another thing is that <clears throat> a lot of times we may have to you know, put a shiny onto either a server or whatever so that more people can benefit from that. So Docker is a very good choice because you can actually modularize your shiny application within the you know, environment and then you can expose the service by using the, you know, the, the Docker container, right? And also Kubernetes will be one step further because it can, you know, orchestrate a cl cluster of containers so that you can even scale up your uh, Docker containers, your shiny applications. So I will just go through uh, the steps of how you can really, you know, develop a uh, shiny application for our data analytics and then, you know, deploy onto the Kubernetes clusters. So the walkthrough will start from the data exploration. So basically we're using data which consists of several columns including age and other basic, you know, demographic information of the employees and um, also we have the label of attrition which is what we are trying to predict. And uh, some basic steps for before we go to the modeling part is that we have to pre-process the data to basically like remove the NAs and known variants and uh, do some data tab conversion and so on and so forth to make sure the data quality is within our expectation. And then after that, we do some feature selection. And this is based on some modeling technique 
so that we can see we can rank the importance of the variables so that later on we can select the most salient, salient uh, features from all of these available ones in order to have a good model. And then after that, uh, one of the critical problems for this specific use case is that usually we see actually the, uh, uh, the people who have left the company, they are the minorities. So that means that the data is not balanced. So we have to apply some you know, technique to rebalance the data set and then make sure we can you know, uh, um, build a good model based on some good data set. And then after that will be the modeling part. And here, uh, just now we, we, we mentioned that we have several choices of the algorithms, and so that we can just you know, uh, try with all of them and do the selection on these algorithms in order to choose the optimal one. So here is the comparison. And usually for the classification problem, we use metrics such as uh, accuracy, record, and precision. And this kind of thing will help, help us understand how well a model performs by using the data, right? So the next part is that, okay, after we have the analytics, we have the models, and we have to develop some shiny apps so that people, let's say, we are, um, we are working for another group of people who are interested in our use cases, so maybe we have to think about what kind of applications we need to develop, right? So here, I just, I mean, for illustration purpose, I have two applications. The first one is that, okay, uh, you can imagine some people in a data science team, they have to do the data exploration. They may have to, you know, interactively visualize the data in order to understand better about the data. And the second application is after, let's say, you have uh, understand well enough about the data and you have to pass to somebody else who has experience with modeling part. So the second one is for doing some modeling and fine tune your, uh, uh, you know, the hyperparameters of an algorithm and you can even play with, for example, just now we mentioned uh, the rebalancing technique like SMOD or whatever, whatever in order to make the model to be well performed with the, the data. So these are basically two applications we are interested in. And uh, <clears throat> I, I suppose most of the people in the room are familiar with how we can develop the Shiny app, right? And uh, so this is the basic structure uh, of the directory, how we can you know, arrange the things. And uh, for Shiny apps, basically we have uh, UI, we have a uh, server, and these are the two compos uh, compository R scripts. And you have to pull the things into the scripts like um, just now I mentioned the basic, you know, visualization codes and uh, modeling codes, this kind of thing will go there. And uh, then we have to uh, make sure that the Shiny app can be uh, packaged into a Docker image, right? So that we have to, you know, above the layer, we have another Docker file, which, you know, uh, tell the Docker infrastructure to to, to say that, okay, this is all my stuff, and later on, you just build the image by using the content in my Docker file, right? So here, I also show the command of how you can do the building of the Docker image with your Shiny app uh, uh, application codes, right? So, and next part is that, okay, after I have uh, uh, created my Shiny, uh, uh, sorry, my, my Docker image, and I will, uh, uh, host my Docker image somewhere on the website, right? For example, the, the Docker Hub, uh, or maybe a private repository where you, you want to put your Docker image on. And then I want to create a, you know, cluster for, uh, you know, uh, deploying my Docker uh, image on a, you know, Kubernetes environment. So this is how we can do with, uh, actually there's this service on Azure Cloud Platform, it's called uh, Azure Container Services. So we just launched the services and we used the orchestration method to be Kubernetes and then <clears throat> with some uh, proper settings for the environment and we can use the, the uh, uh, Kubernetes command line to you know, launch the de uh, deployments of the Docker containers as well as the services we're interested in, right? So Next part is that, okay, after, let's say, I have deployed my uh, uh, containerized Shiny applications, what I'm interested in is how I can scale it, right? Because this is super important. 
And maybe just go back to my previous example, maybe the, the shiny applic uh, application is for uh, a very small group of data scientists, right? So maybe we don't have a very big constraint of, for example, latency or concurrency or this kind of thing. I mean, but let's say if your application is for a very big group of data scientists and you have many, many more applications, so how can you, you, you know, use this design constraints to decide what is the size of your, uh, for example, your cluster and how many CPUs you need and how many pods uh, and how many other uh, um, design parameters you have to specify when you choose uh, the numbers in the launching of your cluster, right? So these are the things we have to consider. For example, some of the parameters like the number of CPUs for a vir virtual machine and uh, some other uh, uh, parameters like the latency, this will be something you have to bear in mind to, de to decide when you deploy the application. So these are the formulas you can basically use as a heuristics to decide what are the actual values you have to use for, for this kind of thing. So here, actually, I would say the, the, the design constraint really comes from the, for example, the request per second. Let's say you are serving a large group of people and maybe the request per second will be a large number, right? And also the latency will be another critical design parameter as well. So these kind of thing, depends on your actual scenario. And this parameter will be used to calculate the number of paths. And then this number of paths will go to the ne next formula to calculate what is the cluster size and what is the number of CPUs you have to, you know, preserve for each of your virtual machine, right? So this is how we do the, you know, calculation to like decide what is the size of your uh, Kubernetes cluster. And for the Shiny app, we know that we have the package of profiles, and you can, you know, do the profiling of your Shiny application in order to measure what is the latency, roughly latency, of your of running your stuff for a Shiny app. For example, for my uh, modeling application, maybe I need to, you know, I need uh, 50,000 seconds to 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 do something, uh, a millisecond to 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 launch the application, right? <coughs> All right, cool. So now I'm going to show you some, the demo I have created for the two applications we, we discussed just now, right? So if I firstly go to my console, okay, so this is actually one of my virtual machine I use as a client, right? So I can type a command. So it's like uh, Kubernetes command line, and I want to get the services. What 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 services I have uh, exposed? So basically, these are the information, and you can see that there are two services based on two uh, containers, right? So the first one is called the HR data. So this is for the explorative study on the data we have for HR, the uh, employee attrition protection analysis. So the second one is for model. So you can see that because we know within the Kubernetes cluster, the, they have the IP for communication for each of the containers. So the, what is the point of the service? The service is actually exposed the internal containerized application to the outside world. So that we have something called the external IP, which we can access from the outside, from internet. And uh, to be more specific, we have to, you know, we have to use the, the port number in order to access this IP address to use this application. So let's say for the first one is the HR data, right? So let me go to my web browser. And, uh, you can see this is the IP address. And uh, following that is the, the port number, which is 3030. So actually the port number will be defined when you uh, 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 when you create your uh, Docker image. So basically this information will be put into the Docker file. So you can see that this is my application for the data visualization. Actually it's a very, I would say simple one, right? I didn't spend too much time on designing the intro, but yeah, you know, yeah. So there will be several like uh, options and for example, you can 
like uh, choose whether the total working years will be one of the factors to 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 be used for pred predicting whether this guy is an attrition or not, something like that. Okay, okay. okay. So this is one of the application, and uh, another one is the modeling. So it's, it, it has similar user face, uh, user interface, and uh, you can do some other advanced stuff. Let's say, assuming you have understand understood your data well, and you can like, let's say, you want to uh, just now we show you in the walkthrough, right? You want to play with the modeling part, and you can, for example choose one of the algorithms, run the forest, the SVM, whatever, and you uh, click train, and you will uh, uh, have a model trained by using the internal implementation of the algorithm, right? So, yeah, so that's basically what I have for the, the demo, right? So I believe you're curious about how you can reproduce everything by yourself. So if you're interested, you just go to the GitHub repository and you just, you know, follow the steps and everything is detailed out there and you have uh, basically the R markdown and all of the source code, you just do it by yourself. And uh, the only thing is that probably if you want to do the Kubernetes, you have to subscribe on Azure Cloud Platform, you know, to create a cluster in order to run everything. Yeah, so I think that's yep, pretty much about it. Yep, thank you very much.